Hi, now here we have an example based around probability and drawing Venn diagrams. And if you'd like to try this, give you a moment uh, just to pause the video and come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine. Okay, welcome back if you did have a go. Well, what we're given is two events A and B. We're told that the probability of A equals 0.35 and the probability of B equals 0.45 and also the probability of A intersection B equals 0.13. And we've got to find the probability of A union B and also the probability of A complement given B complement. Remember A complement means not in A and B complement would mean not in B. Okay? Well, to do something like this, probability of A union B is a standard result. And it's best seen through a Venn diagram. We're going to need to draw this Venn diagram anyway later on in this question, so no harm in drawing it now. Okay? Let's just say we take, in general, two events A and B. Let's say that's event A and this is event B. Then when we're talking about the probability of A union B, we're referring to the area within all of A and all of B. So we should be familiar with this result that for part A, the probability of A union B is equal to, it can be broken down to all of A, that's the probability of A, plus the probability of B, all of B. But we've now counted the overlap here in twice. So we subtract the probability of that overlap, which is A intersection B. OK, so this is a standard result. You should be familiar with this anyway. And all we need to do now is just put in our values. We've got the probability of A, it's 0.35. We've got the probability of B, it's 0.45. And we've also got the probability of A in section B, 0.13. And if you do this sum, you should find you end up with 0.67. Now for part B, we've got to work out the probability of a complement given B complement. In other words, the probability of not A given that B has not occurred. And to do something like this, we can either do it by using a formula or we can do it directly from the Venn diagram. I normally like to do it directly from the Venn diagram, but I'll show you both ways, starting with the formula version first of all. So what is this formula? for the probability of something given something else has occurred. Well, let's say it's the probability of x, say, given that y has occurred. It's always the same as the probability that both events occur, that would be x and y, x intersecting with y, divided by the probability of the given event, which in this case is y. So this is a formula that you should be familiar with. So we can apply this formula then to our question here because in part B then we've got to work out the probability of not A given not B. So it's going to be equal to the probability of both events occurring so that's going to be the probability of not A intersected with the probability of not B. And then this is divided by the probability of the given event, which in this case is the probability of not B. Now you don't want to make the mistake here that I often see the probability of not A and not B. It's not necessarily the probability of not A multiplied by the probability of not B. Okay? What we've got to look at is the Venn diagram. Not A and not B. Not A is going to be the area outside of A and not B is going to be the area outside of B. But we're looking for the section that is in common to both those regions. And that 
is going to be the region that is totally outside of A and B. In fact, it's going to be this region here that I'm shading. Okay? And this region is in fact the complement of A union B. We worked out that the probability of A union B was 0 0.67. So this area on the outside here is going to be in fact 0 0.33. Okay? So that's going to go in here as 0 0.33. And what we're doing is comparing this, if you like, dividing by, but comparing it to the probability of not B. Now, not B is the region outside of B. So if I can just overlay this on here, it also goes into A there. Okay, or well, part of A comes around here on the outside. Okay, so if we divide that by the probability of not B, we know that B is 0.45, so not B is going to be 0 0.55. And if we work this out, you end up with it equaling 0 0.6. Now I did say you could do this directly from the Venn diagram here. Because when we're told the probability of not A given not B, first of all we know that B did not occur. Okay, So we're only looking at this red section here. And that red section okay, has a probability, not B, of 1 minus 0 0.45, which is 0 0.55. And then, then, given this area here, or this probability, if you like, I'm looking for the probability that A did not occur within this red region. And that clearly has to be the region in blue. So the region in blue, then, is 0.33. Now all I'm doing is just comparing these two values, the blue region compared to the red region. 0.33 in other words compared with the 0.55. So if I was doing it off the Venn diagram I wouldn't have used the formula as such, I'd have just gone from here directly to here. So I hope that's given you an idea either way how we work out the probability of not A given not B, 0 0.6. Now in the next part, part C, we're told first of all that the event C has probability C equal to 0 0.20. And the events A and C are mutually exclusive and the events B and C are independent. Um, we've got to find the probability of B intersecting with C. Well, if two events are independent, we should be familiar with the result that the probability of those two events is exactly the same as the probability of B multiplied by the probability of C. You can only use this rule if you're told that events are independent. Just going back to up here, I couldn't use that rule here. I couldn't say this was the probability of not A multiplied by the probability of not B because I wasn't too sure whether these two events were independent at the time. But now we're told that B and C are, so we can use this rule. And so therefore, we've got the probability of B, it's 0 0.45, so we've got 0 0.45 multiplied by the probability of C, which is 0 0.20. Work this out, and what you've got is 0.09. Okay, so that's part C done for us. Now, for part D, we've got to draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the events A, B, and C, and the probabilities for each region. So, to draw our Venn diagram, we'll put it in here. And uh, let's just take it to about there-ish, okay? And... Just close that off there. We've got our three sets, A, B, and C. Now, we know that A and C are mutually exclusive. That means that they can't happen at the same time. 
okay and from a Venn diagram perspective we would normally draw them as two separate sets so suppose I've got A like that I would have C say out here okay so that's my set C mutually exclusive the probability of A intersection C would be zero in cases like that okay um, now we're told that we've got our set B well we know that B and C overlap because we've worked out that the probability of B intersection C equals 0.09 and we know that A intersects B because we were told that it had a probability of 0.13 so I'm expecting to see then say set B drawn something like this okay overlapping both A and C and we've got to put these probabilities in so we can start for instance with say the probability of A intersected B this region in here we found it or we were given it up here 0.13 so we got 0.13 there we can finish off this region in here purely because we know that all of A was 0.35 so if I take 0.13 from 0.35 that's going to give me 0.22 and what else do we know probability of B intersected with C we just worked that out over here that's 0.09 we know all of C has a probability of 0.20 so if I take 0.09 away from 0.20, that leaves us with 0.11. And as for B, we've got 0.13 here and 0.09. I know that the whole of B, we're told, is 0.45. So if you take 0.13 and 0.09 away from 0.45, you'll end up with 0.23 in here. And don't forget that all the regions, and that includes this one outside of A, B and C, must total one whole one. So if you add all of these probabilities up and take it away from one, you'll find you'll get 0.22. So I'll put 0.22 there. Okay, so that's part D done. Now in part E, we've got to find the probability of the complement of B union C so in other words what's not in B union C so B union C is everything in B or C or both so it's everything within this region round here but we want the complement of it so that's going to be this 0.22 and this 0.22 here it's these two regions which are outside B union C okay so in answer to this one then if we just write the introduction in as the probability of the complement of B union C okay then it's going to be equal to the 0.22 there plus the 0.22 here on the outside and that clearly comes to 0.44 okay so I hope you've been able to uh, work that out if not hope that uh, my workings have given you some idea on how to go about that all right